Google has released a fun AI experiment called Move Mirror. There's not much to it, but it is fun, especially for the little ones. It matches whatever pose you make to hundreds of images of other people making that same pose. When you visit the Move Mirror website, you allow it to access your computer's camera. It uses a computer vision model called PoseNet to detect your body and identify what positions your joints are in. It then compares your posts to more than 80,000 images and finds which ones best mirror your position. Move Mirror then shows you those images next to your own in real time, and as you move around, the images you're matched to change as well. You can even make a GIF of your poses and your Move Mirror matches. Google is showcasing how computer vision techniques like pose estimation can be available to anyone with a computer and a webcam. And if you're worried about what's happening with your image when you use Move Mirror, Google assures us that it's not being stored or sent to a server because Move Mirror is powered by tensorflow.js. All of the post tracking is done directly in your browser and is never sent out to the world. Other Google AI experiments have allowed users to type in statements or questions and get related book passages in response or get rhymes based on what objects are in front of their cameras. You can try out Move Mirror right now by going to experiments.withgoogle.com. Boston Dynamics back in the news this week. They're preparing to build its terrifying army of robot dogs. The company has set a target date of July 2019 as the time it will be ready to manufacture 1,000 of its compact Spot Mini models annually. Spot Mini is the smallest variant of Boston Dynamics' many different models of robo-dogs, yet at approximately 2 feet 9 inches tall, it weighs only around 66 pounds and has an hour and a half of battery life. The company has recently demonstrated all kinds of functionalities like opening doors for other robots and increasingly complicated navigational skills. While the company already announced plans to launch commercially in 2019, with a limited run of robots already in pre-production, Inverse's report has some new details, such as that the Spot Mini is intended to eventually become a multi-use platform of sorts. The overarching goal for the 26-year-old company is to become what Android operating systems are for phones, but for robots, a versatile foundation for limitless applications. That's the plan anyway. Boston Dynamics is already testing Spot Mini with potential clients in four categories, construction, delivery, security, and home assistance. The attachment point where the Spot Mini's robotic arm stems from its body could, in the future, hold a variety of attachments to be designed and produced by third parties, making it more versatile. For example, instead of a claw, the arm could terminate in a power tool or even a camera. One possible use for the robot is home delivery, where the robots would at least, in theory, face fewer regulatory hurdles than plans by Amazon and UPS to deliver packages by unmanned aerial vehicles. But that approach creates its own problems, including that it would have to be cheaper than overworked humans be capable of navigating obstacles that aren't static like pedestrian dogs in traffic intersections, and perhaps be prepared for the possibility somebody could try to wrestle the package away from the robot. Construction sites would perhaps be even harder to deploy a Spot Mini in safely for human or bot, given that the Occupational Safety and Health Administration ranks construction as one of the most dangerous industries. Security seems like one of the more plausible uses for the Spot Mini given that all it really needs to do is walk around, record things, and maybe detect and report anything weird going on. Inverse also theorized that the Spot Mini, or its possible successors, could find use in elder care, which tends to be so expensive that robots could be cost-effective. Boston Dynamics' robot army may start rolling off production lines soon, whether or not it has anything more useful to do 
then serve as status symbols for the ultra-wealthy, navigate hallways, or maybe do backflips like its Atlas cousin. The Food and Drug Administration has finally given Impossible Burger's plant-based meat its stamp of approval. Impossible Foods submitted the meat substitute for review back in 2014, but the FDA responded with concerns that its key ingredient, a protein known as soy leg hemoglobin, might cause allergies and other adverse effects. The protein is commonly found in soy plants' roots, but since we don't typically eat that part of the plant, well, the FDA had reservations about its safety. In response, the company sent in more info, including results from a rat feeding study, which convinced the agency to declare that the plant-based meat is generally recognized as safe for human consumption. According to Impossible Foods' announcement, the rat feeding study proves that consuming the ingredient in amounts much, much more than our normal dietary exposure to it wouldn't produce any bad effects. Further tests also showed that it has a very low risk of causing allergic reactions. Those are the most salient points in the company's application, because Impossible Burgers wouldn't be possible without the soy component. The protein carries the iron-containing molecule called heme, which gives the meat substitute its meat-like taste and even makes it bleed like the real thing. While the FDA never prohibited the company from conducting business, the Impossible Burger is available in 3,000 locations across the country right now. That includes White Castle. It believes the agency's no questions letter could change people's perception of its products. If uh, this makes more people want to give the Impossible Burger a shot, well, then the company's meat substitute could become more widely available in the future. One of the things that we learned from the DARPA Robotics Challenge is that it's useful for robots to have legs to walk, but it's even more useful for robots to be versatile and adaptive with multi-model locomotion capabilities that they can deploy depending on the situation. At the DRC, we saw all kinds of different designs, but one of the more unique approaches came from the University of Bonn in Germany with their robot, Mamaro. Mamaro used a centaur design with four legs that had wheels on the bottom coupled to a humanoid upper torso with a head and arms. It was the top-ranked European robot in the DRC, completing an almost perfect run in just 34 minutes. We've since been wondering whether the Centaur design would inspire other disaster robots, and now we have the answer. And it's yes. A consortium of European research groups announced a new Centaur robot platform called, appropriately enough, Centaro. The robot was built at the Italian Institute of Technology. The project is part of the Centaro Consortium, funded by the European Commission and coordinated by researchers from the University of Bonn, the same group that developed Mamaro. The goal of Centaro is building a human-robot symbiotic system where a human operator is telepresent with its whole body in a centaur-like robot, which is capable of robust locomotion and dexterous manipulation in the rough terrain and uh, conditions characteristic of disasters. From the look of things, Centauro shares the same kind of rugged capabilities we've seen in other IIT robots, meaning that this could be a robot that manages to be both a research tool and real-world useful. At 1.5 meters tall and weighing 93 kilograms, Centauro is both larger and somehow more agile than the video might make it seem. It's made of lightweight metals like aluminum, magnesium, and titanium with skins of 3D printed plastic. Inside are a trio of computers to handle perception, control, and motion planning, along with enough batteries to keep Centauro moving for 2.5 hours at 
a time. The idea is that this combination of quadruped and humanoid optimizes both stability and mobility while allowing a remote human operator to much more intuitively control the robot's arms and head, since everything is oriented in a familiar way. We're looking forward to seeing more of how Centauro integrates full autonomy, supervised autonomy, and telepresence control with hardware this capable, well, the robot may be limited primarily by what it's smart enough to do, along with the interface that lets a human control it directly. Hopefully, we'll start seeing more demos from IIT to get a better sense of all the cool stuff that Centauro will be learning.